said. Amen. I'd like you to take your Bibles this morning and turn to the book of Joshua, chapter number 10. We're going to continue our study preaching through this book. And uh, we've come to Joshua, chapter 10, as we follow the children of Israel into the promised land. In Joshua, chapter 10. If you haven't already, uh, well, I know you've already noticed that uh, Brother Trey and Sister Betty are not here, but if you have not heard the exact uh, reason on that, uh, I'll give you a quick update. Uh, uh, the radiation treatments that uh, Brother Trey is receiving uh, to try to back that tumor off of, he's got a tumor back up on the back of his neck uh, that is uh, causing pain in his shoulder, so they were going to give some radiations there. They did their best to uh, try to shoot that radiation so that it wouldn't affect his vocal cords, uh, but it has, and uh, so he has a very, very uh, sore throat and uh, graspy uh, talk, and his voice is very, very weak. Uh, and also, for whatever reason, uh, uh, Sister Betty's throat is also hurting, uh, so I don't know if she has strep throat or if uh, it's a sympathy. Uh, you know, sometimes when, you're, when your wife hurts, you hurt in the same place. It is. Has anybody ever had that? Uh, I do uh, sometimes. Well, and I don't know if it's power of suggestion or something, but you know, Sherry will say, "Boy, my my elbow has really been bothering me." I'll, I'll swear it. The next hour, mine will start bothering me. I don't know what that is, and uh, I've told her, "Just don't tell me about it." And I don't want my elbow aching, you know. So uh, I don't know exactly, but uh, we miss them. Uh, we miss them very, very much, and continue. Uh, to, uh, to hold them up in prayers. And, and I will just reiterate, if you were here last Sunday morning and the, and the preciousness of, of us praying and gathering around uh, uh, Trey and Betty and anointing with oil and just putting them into the hands of God, boy, that was, that was a tremendous service, tremendous service. The Amen. presence of God was just so very, very real. And, uh, so we miss them. They'll be out today. Uh, I think uh, Brother and Sister Betty's going to check in with the hospital, not hospital, but the doctor tomorrow. And then Trey's got two more of 10. So he's got eight of those radiation things behind him. And he's got two more Monday and Tuesday. So just uh, hold him up in prayer and uh, we'll ask God's, uh, God's will be done. That's, uh, that's, where, mm -hmm. that's where we're at. Uh, for, for Trey and Sister Betty. All right, Joshua chapter number 10. Hudson Taylor at the age of 37, he was already a mighty man of faith and a great missionary warrior. He was longing for a sense of spiritual victory that he didn't have. <clears throat> you, you say, well, that's kind of odd. Here's, here's a man who's a missionary and he's being used of God. And he has this sense of not having spiritual victory in his life. Well, as he wrote, he was often restless and irritated. He felt defeated in his prayer life. He felt like he was a struggling Christian wondering if there was something better for him. Apparently, he read a letter from a fellow missionary of the China Inland Mission, which is what he is famous for. He uh, was the founder of the China Inland Mission, the father of missions even, just a great, great missionary. But he read this letter from a fellow missionary of the China Inland Mission, one that was little known, not a big famous guy or anything like that. And uh, he told his director, which was Hudson Taylor, uh, out of a full heart, how that he had come into joy and peace and victory. And Hudson Taylor saw it in a flash, he wrote, and his exchanged life <laughs> began. The miracle of Christ working out through him. That's how he described it. Now Hudson Taylor, he was a great missionary and a great Christian to begin with, but being greatly used 
was not the secret of, of what he found. In fact, quite otherwise, he wrote back home in England, where he's serving in China, he, he wrote back, he instructed the guardian of his children, back in those days, missionaries left their children back at home in England under tutelage and guidance there. So he instructed the guardian of his children in England to teach them in their young years, not only God's plan of salvation by grace through faith, to make them Christians, but God's plan of present salvation by grace through faith to enable them to live victorious Christian lives, to be victorious in their daily living. You see, Hudson Taylor, as great as he was as a missionary and as a founder of a whole organization to reach uh, the Far East uh, for Christ, as great as he was, he had to learn the same lesson that we and every other believer has to learn. We have to realize and we have to, we have to understand there's more to having a life filled with daily spiritual victory than just getting saved. Some people seem to think that after we've committed our life to Christ, that we can just cruise. We put it on cruise control. And, and we don't have to put any forth any effort. I mean, God has saved us, and that's a wonderful thing. I'm telling you, to experience a life filled with daily spiritual victories, there's more to it than just getting saved. And when we get it right, when we get it right, the restlessness and the irritation, it goes away. A, a defeated prayer life is a thing of the past. When we get it right, wondering about and struggling for something better ceases. Amen. We have to get it right. And Joshua chapter 2 can help us. Because the daily battles of God's people and Joshua chapter 10, guide us to having daily victory in our own Christian lives. I want you to look at Joshua chapter 10, and, and let's, uh, let's begin with verse number 15. Joshua chapter 10, verse number 15. And Joshua returned, and all Israel with him, unto the camp to Gilgal, which was their headquarters in this uh, battle and campaign here as they're fighting in the promised land. But these five kings fled and hid themselves in a cave at Makeda. And it was told Joshua, the five kings, uh, which they had all confederated, kind of got together, ganged up on, on Israel and one of their allies, the five kings, it was told to Joshua, the five kings uh, are found hid in a cave at Makeda. So Joshua says, well, I want you to roll some great stones and cover up the mouth of that thing, of the cave, and I want you to set some guards by it, set men by it, for to keep those kings uh, uh, on, you know, keep them there. And stay not, but pursue after your enemies, and smite the hindmost part of them, strike them, suffer them not to enter into their cities. For the Lord your God has delivered them into your hand. Came to pass when Joshua and the children of Israel had made an end of, of uh, killing them with a very great slaughter till they were consumed, that the rest which remained of them entered into fenced cities. And all the people returned to the camp to Joshua at Makeda in peace. I like this. None moved his tongue against any of the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. The defeated enemy, not even cursing Israel at this point, they were beat so bad that didn't want to open their mouth. I want to draw any attention. Verse 22. Then said Joshua, open the mouth of the cave and bring out those five kings unto me out of that cave. And they did so, brought forth those five kings unto him out of the cave, king of Jerusalem, king of Hebron, king of Yarmouth, and the king of Lachish, and the king of Eglon. And it came to pass when they brought out those kings unto Joshua, that Joshua called for all the men of Israel and said to the captains of the men of war which went with them, hey, come over here, guys. Come near and put your feet on the necks of these kings. Had them lay down on the ground. Go ahead. All five of these guys, I want you to put your foot right on the back of their neck and press. They 
came near put their feet upon the necks of them. And Joshua said to them, Fear not, nor be dismayed. Be strong and of good courage. For thus shall the Lord do to all your enemies against whom you fight. Daily victory. That's what we're talking about. Not just an occasional uh, answer to prayer. I'm talking about every day walking with God in a way that we can have victory over the battles that come to us on a daily basis. And daily victory, it depends on something. It depends on us conforming to the spirit as well as to the letter of God's word. Law. Say amen right there. Amen. Verses 1 through 14 of Joshua 10 contain the account of Joshua's victory at Gibeon. It was experienced by a once in history miracle of God. The earth's rotation was halted by the Almighty. The sun and the moon stood still to allow an additional 12 hours of sunlight. Opposing enemies of God's people could not escape under cover of darkness. In verse 14, the Bible says, there's never been a day like it before or since. You said, can God do that? It's just as easy for God to reach down and stop the clock of the universe as it is for us to reach down and stop our wristwatch. Yes, God can do that. Can I get a witness? Amen. During the battle, five kings who had ganged up on and attacked Israel's ally, they were cornered. And so Joshua said, put them on ice until the battle is over. And they did. Shut them up in that cave. Now I want you to notice four little words at the first of verse 19. Look back at verse number 19. The opening four little words there where Joshua says, and stay you not. Stay not. Now, these words imply that there had been maybe a pause in the Israeli pursuit of their enemies. I mean, Joshua here is seeking to stimulate his people to a final victorious effort. And you got to think now what's been going on here. As weary as they may have been with an overnight uphill 20-mile march plus an additional 12 hours of sunlight fighting, this was not the time to relax. But there was no sleep for them for 36 hours. So for most of them, they were tempted to ease up and to slow down. We're tired. We're weary in the battle. We're struggling. It would be easy for us to imagine that in those people's minds, in God's people's minds, they're believing that they had done, they had complied with the letter of God's word. And what, and what Moses had said back in Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 2, Moses said, When the Lord your God shall deliver them before you, you shall strike them and utterly destroy them. You will make no covenant with them, nor show mercy. So in Israel's mind, they're probably thinking, man, we're tired. We're tired. The enemy's defeated. They're on the run. Let's take a break. Let's kind of ease up a little bit. Let's slow down some. Thousands of the enemy were killed by the hailstone artillery from heaven. Verse 11 reveals there were more which died with hailstones than they whom the children of Israel killed with the sword. So I know they're asking themselves, man, should not the remaining survivors be shown some clemency? Should we, should we be so ruthless? Should we be so merciless? And we ask ourselves, why? Would the God of the Bible, who advertises himself as love, seem to be so cold-blooded, callous, and cruel? Well, the answer is this. God gave these people four 
illustration is if I described to you the personalities and the behaviors and the evils the Canaanites were known for, then the worst of modern day sinners would turn away in disgust. Decadent, corrupt, immoral, and degenerate. These are words that don't even scratch the surface of how bad these people were. The Canaanites received centuries of mercy and grace. But I want you to understand, there is a line where God's mercy meets God's holiness. Right. There is a line. And once that line is crossed, the judgment of Almighty God falls. And Moses and Joshua, they clearly understood their mission as the agents of God's holy judgment on the Canaanites. The Canaanites had spit in the face of God. 440 years of mercy, grace, and kindness, and, and, and love, and long-suffering, and they spit in the face of God, God says, that's enough. My judgment will fall upon the land of Canaan. He just happened to be using Israel's armies at that time to carry out his judgment. That's the why that God has him going in and killing every man, woman, boy, and child, regardless of age, regardless of status, regardless of who they were. Joshua spurred them to obey the spirit of God's word rather than the letter of God's word. Look at the, look at the second part of verse number 19. He says, don't hold up, verse number 19, stay ye not, don't hold up, don't hold back, don't get tired, pursue after your enemy, strike behind most of them, suffer them not to enter into their cities, for the Lord your God has delivered them into your hands. Later on, Joshua reassures them, even after saying this, he reassures them by acting out that parable where he has all five of those kings lay down uh, on the ground and has the captains come up and actually put their foot on those necks of those kings that had opposed God and God's people. Now, the Bible tells us in the New Testament that the things that happened to Israel in the Old Testament are written for our learning. They're written for our admonition. They're written for us to gather principles about our spiritual life that they had to actually fight in their physical life. Yes, they had physical combat, arrows, bows and arrows, shields and spears, chariots, the whole nine yards. This is a picture of us after we're saved, we have battles, spiritual battles. And when it comes to our spiritual battles, against the world, the flesh, and the devil, if we are to walk daily by the Savior's side, we have to adopt the same ruthless, take-no-prisoners attitude that Joshua said they had to have back in that day. You see, what do you mean? Daily spiritual victory means rejecting the world's philosophy and views of life. Amen. It means crucifying all of our fleshly desires that are contrary to God's word. Amen. It means that we're going to put on the whole armor of God so that we can stand against the wiles of the devil. Say amen. amen. We have to have that don't let up. Don't stand down. Don't give up. We have to have that ruthless, take no prisoners attitude in our daily spiritual living for Jesus Christ. Amen. And then verse 25 can be our promise and our claim. Where Joshua said to them, Fear not, nor be dismayed. Be strong and of a good courage. For thus shall the Lord do to all your enemies against whom you fight. You know, some of us fight against depression. Some of us fight against loneliness. Some of us fight uh, against other spiritual battles, temptations, and sins. And 
and struggles. Some of us, the pressures of life we have constantly, every day in our life we have these battles. But if we will conform our lives to God's word, instead of trying to get God to conform to our word and our way of thinking, we can experience daily victory. You believe that? Say amen. Amen. Daily victory depends on our conformity to God's word, not in trying to bring God into conformity with our word. Daily victory depends upon our conforming to the spirit as well as the letter of the law. And then when we conform to the spirit of God's word, I want you to see this, Daily victory comes like clockwork. Just like clockwork. But look at verse 28. Look at verse 28, Joshua chapter number 10. And that day, Joshua took Makeda, smote it with the edge of the sword, and the king thereof, he utterly destroyed, that's what Moses and God had said, utterly destroyed them, and all the souls that were therein, all the wicked, depraved people, he let none remain, and he did to the king of Makeda as he did uh, unto the king of Jericho. Then Joshua passed from Makeda and all Israel with him unto Lithna. Remember, there were five of these kings, they had five little kingdoms around in there. And he fought against Libna. Verse 30. And the Lord delivered it also, and the king thereof, into the hand of Israel. And he struck it with the edge of the sword, and all the souls that were therein. He let none remain in it, all those wicked, depraved people. He was an agent of God's judgment, but unto the king thereof, as he did unto the king of Jericho. He did to the king of Libna. Watch verse 31. Joshua passes from Libna, and all Israel with it to, to Lachish, and camped against it, fought against it. And another battle, and the Lord delivered Lachish into the hand of Israel, which took it on the, ooh, this is what caught my mind, the second day, okay, got victories on the first day, we're getting victories on the second day, smote it with the edge of the sword, all the souls that were therein, that according to all that he had done to live them. Then Horam, king of Gezer, uh, came, to help, uh, came up to help Lachish, Joshua struck him his people, until he had left him, none remaining. And from Lachish, Joshua passed into Eglon, and all Israel with him. They camped against it, fought against it, and they took it on that day. Oh, there's the next day. Got victories on the first day, got victories on the second day, got victories on the next day. Smote it with the edge of the sword, all the souls that were there, and he utterly destroyed that day, according to all that he had done into Lachish. And Joshua went up from Eglon, verse 36, and all Israel with them to Hebron. And they fought against it, and they took it, and smote it with the edge of the sword, the king thereof, and all cities thereof, and all souls that were therein. He let none remain, according to all that he had done to Eglon, but destroyed it utterly, and all the souls that were therein. Joshua returned, and all Israel with them to Deber, and fought against it. Another day, another battle. And he took it, and the king thereof, and all the cities thereof, and they smote it with the edge of the sword, and utterly destroyed all the souls that were therein. He left none remaining, as he had done to Hebron, so he did to Deber, and the king thereof, as he had also done to Libna, and to her king. One day of battle, another day of battle, another day of battle, another day of battle, one day of victory, the next day of victory, the next day of victory, the next day of victory. Say amen. Amen. You see what's going on here? You see how God wants us to live in our Christian life as we battle against the world, the flesh, and the devil? Joshua learned the vital importance of conforming to the spirit of God's word. 
God until the job was done, Joshua never let up. He never stood down. He never relaxed. And once you understand something, as believers in Jesus Christ today, in living our lives, as long as God's people obey the spirit of God's word, we are invincible. Amen. The world can't conquer us. The flesh can't conquer us. Amen. The devil cannot conquer us. Amen. We are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Say amen. amen. As long as we obey the spirit of God's word. See, this is what I believe. I believe it's possible for us to live clean lives. Right. I believe it is possible to so conform ourselves to God's word that no obstacle, no challenge, no situation can defeat us. Say amen. amen. I believe when we walk with God, all things are possible. Amen. If God be for us, who can be against us? Daily victory depends on our conformity to God's word, not in trying to bring God into conformity with our word. Daily victory depends upon us, our conforming to the spirit as well as the letter of the law. And when we conform to the spirit of God's word, daily victory comes like clockwork. And conforming to the spirit of God's word assures us of the greatness of God's power. Amen. Let's look at verse 40. Look at verse 40, the closing verses of chapter 10. And Joshua spoke all the country, struck all the country of the hills and of the south and of the vale and valley and of the springs and all their kings. He left none remaining, but utterly destroyed all that breathed as the Lord God of Israel commanded. See, they were just agents of God in this judgment. You have to understand that. Verse 41, Joshua struck them from Kadesh Barnea, which is in the farthest south, even unto uh, Gaza, same guys that's been on the news recently, same area of the Israel, and all the country of Goshen, even unto Gibeon, and all these kings in their land did Joshua take at one time, because the Lord God of Israel fought for Israel. And Joshua returned, and all Israel with him, unto the camp to Gilgal at headquarters there. These, these closing three or four verses right here, they actually summarize the whole, the whole lesson, the whole chapter. They, they just kind of bring it all together in a nutshell. When we conform in spirit to the commands of God, verse 40, then we can depend upon the protection of the power of God. Verse 42. See the words of verse 43, and all Israel with him. Joshua returned, and all Israel with him. You know what that implies? That implies that no Hebrews were missing or killed in action. That's, that's big. With as much fighting as they did over all those days against all those enemies. No Hebrews were missing or killed in action. It implies that their complete force returned safe and sound to Gilgal headquarters. Give me praise by saying amen. Amen. Now in our own lives, when we conform to the spirit of God's word, I'm convinced we can win. Amen. Any, any time, 
anywhere and any place. Amen. Say amen. You believe that? Amen. Now, I want to read the following poem very slowly. Daily 
working to conform to the spirit of God's word. That's what it takes to have daily victory in our Christian lives. Maybe you're like Hudson Taylor, who was serving God, seemingly had all God wanted in his life. But there is a restlessness, a irritation. You may be struggling and wondering if there is not something better. Would you be willing to come to the altar of prayer, asking God to empower you to not only comply with the letter of his word, but also beyond that, being able to comply with the spirit of the holy word of Christ. Would you come? You know, daily victories will come like clockwork when you conform yourself to the spirit of God's word. I invite you to come and pray. Say, Lord, my life is in your hands. Everything that I am, everything that I have, everything I hope to be, I'm giving it to you. Mold me and make me into what you want me to be. Just come pray that prayer. Come pray that prayer, a similar one. To win, you have to never let up, never stand down, never relax. And, and, and maybe in recent days you have kind of throttled back on your spiritual walk with God. Now's the time. Get back where you need to be. Come forward. Perhaps you're here, you've never experienced a relationship with Jesus Christ through faith. All this talk about daily victory, it, it, it might strike you foreign and strange sounding. Well, this is what the Bible teaches. You can know God like you know a good friend, but it all flows through faith in Jesus Christ. Rather than face judgment, God, at some point in your future, your sins can be forgiven. You can receive the gift of everlasting life in heaven. All you have to do is move forward. Take a step of faith and let us introduce you to Jesus. Would you come? You can pray to you if you want to, but we believe by actually walking forward, you'll help yourself solidify the spiritual decisions that you're making. Someone from our church will meet you at the altar and pray with you and for you. You'll come. Brother Robert, what number do we have? 531, 591, I'm sorry, 591. Will Robert lead us? Would you come? Would you come?
God, I'm so excited to know that one day you're coming back to get us. I'm so excited to know that I can be with you forever. And I'm excited, God, to know that you're alive in my life, in my heart, in everything I say and do. I need you, God, so much to pour out my lives. I ask God as we leave here today that you excite us about you, excite us about your will, excite us about your word, excite us, God, to come back tonight, excite us, God, that you're coming back to get us. I thank you, I praise you, and I ask God in the name of Jesus Christ, my wonderful